My uh, first guest tonight has appeared in numerous films, including My Best Friend's Wedding and The Madness of King George. Currently, you can see him in An Ideal Husband, and starting next Friday, he stars in Inspector Gadget. The man is all over the place. Please welcome Rupert Everett. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Are you cold right now? So freezing it's back here. It's freezing back here. We have no money to heat the place. Our apologies. <laughs> Terrible here. We're kind of hoping your nipples would stand out. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> Bingo! It worked. It doesn't always, you know. How are you? <laughs> very, very well. Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. Uh, you've, uh, you're in one of those situations where you've been acting for quite a while, you've been out there doing good work, and then suddenly... You get a big chance, yeah. Right, you get a chance, and everybody instantly decides that you're great, mm. and uh, which must seem a little That's odd. Just before everyone decides you're really useless again, though. Right. So, you know. Enjoy this time. Exactly. Yeah. I'm making hay while the sun shines, basically. You, uh, but you prepared for this. I'm reading somewhere that when you were a kid, you used to practice being famous. Yeah, I used to. I, I, at my school, I set myself up this little dressing room on a fire escape. And I used to have telephones and wig stands and like little pencils. I pretended they were my makeup and I had a little mirror. And I used to pretend that I was getting ready for shows and I'd talk to my agents and stuff like that. And I'd, <laughs> I'd organize tours to America where I'd be performing in plays. And then whenever I walked anywhere, I'd go <laughs> like this, pretending to be crowds, crapping on, go <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like paparazzi. And sometimes even I'd move like. <laughs> You know, like the flashes um, what, going off. You know what's really, you know what's really sad is I do that now. <laughs> Me too. I walk around pretending, please get back, all of you, and I'm alone in a cornfield. Right. You know. <laughs> but did people think at the time this is a little strange, or they, they went with it? They were okay with it. I think people thought it was kind of funny and cooky. You know. Right. Um, uh, I, the, my dressing room was dismantled in the end because it was a fire hazard, unfortunately. So. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just said, "Get this junk out of here." Yeah, but then I had a major diva fit and uh, set it up. So Somewhere else. Now, uh, you did um, lots of theater work. Mm -hmm. You've done lots of theater work mm -hmm. in the past in London. And it's a little different over there because here audiences and theater audiences can be kind of apathetic. But over they're in London. They're very apathetic in England, too. Very, are they really? But I, I've always heard that they're very intense about their theater, that they're very vocal about if they think you've done a good job or not. They're, ver they're very well read about plays and they're very critical. Is that, is that the case? Kind of, sort of, yeah. I mean, they can be. Because I, I, I was reading something about you, and it said that you uh, once got a letter that was critical of you, right. took you to task a little bit for a performance you gave. Right. So you wrote a letter back, Right. and you enclosed a little gift for the person who was critical of you. Yes, I did. This isn't the story I really like that much, but I suppose I'll have to tell it anyway. <laughs> um, I just read this, and I thought, we've got to talk about this, or I'm really not doing my job. I went into the theater one day for a matinee, and like, you guys, doing a matinee in the theater is one of the most depressing things you can possibly imagine. You, n old women come and see it, just old people with hearing aids, and you hear <laughs> And everyone says, speak up. And I'd gone into the matinee, I opened a bit of mail, and there was this letter from these, this couple called Lorraine and Peter Landau. And they said, on most respects, we thoroughly enjoyed last Saturday's performance, but we couldn't hear a word you said. You must speak up, Mr. Everett. And they gave me this whole thing about how bad I was. I was in such a bad mood, I wrote them back immediately this letter. I said, Dear Lorraine and Peter Lando, I'm so sorry to hear about your disappointment in my performance last Saturday night. Please accept my heartfelt apology. And I turned over the page and I cut off a whole wedge of my pubic hair and I sellotaped it to the letter. <laughs> and I said, Please accept these few pubic hairs in the hope to avoid any further disappointment. <laughs> I just, want to point out, I just want to point out that the cut you made seemed kind of hasty when you... It was very careful. More, you want to take a little more time, you're like, ah, my bikini line. <laughs> Oh, good heavens, what have I done? Uh, my bikini line was intact. <laughs> Excellent. So you never heard back from them, no? No, they called, they, uh, <laughs> they uh, sent a letter to an English uh -huh. newspaper. Right, right. Mm. Uh, let's talk about An Ideal Husband. This yes. is an Oscar Wilde play, yes. which uh, they've turned into a movie. It's yes. getting great reviews. Yes. Tell us a little bit uh, about it. Um, it's a film about a politician who, in a hundred years ago exactly, it was written. And uh, it's about this politician who's a great politician, doing great stuff for his country, and his career is suddenly about to be destroyed by 
some very dark little secrets that happened in his past. What's exciting about it, or what was exciting about it for me, was that a hundred years ago, it relates so clearly and so uh, amazingly to the, the story that we've all been living through the last two years with Clinton, because it's mm -hmm. a similar kind of story. That that it's uh, it's a, it's an exciting film. I think it's you know here we are perched on the millennium and um, looking back a hundred years, you think to yourself, well, a lot has changed, but then at the same time, in one in yeah. one way, very little has changed. We're um, still obsessed with the same things. Yeah. And, well, we have a clip here from An Ideal Husband. Do we need to know anything? Uh, we... This is uh, when everything's gone wrong. The, the film is kind of like a 40s uh, Hollywood movie. It's, a, it's almost a screwball movie, really, and everything's gone wrong for me, and I have to resort to talking to a statue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things have gotten bad. Let's no. take a look. I can't find anyone else to talk to. I'm so full of interesting information. I feel like the latest edition of something or other. Well, after some consideration, there's so much to do. There's only one thing to be done. There comes a time in every son's life when he must indeed follow his father's advice. I shall go to bed at once. guests like that. <laughs> no matter what you do. Uh, the movie An Ideal Husband is in uh, theaters now, and like I say, people are uh, giving it fantastic reviews. And Inspector Gadget opens uh, July 23rd, and you're the, you're the villain. Yes, I am. All right. Uh, listen, uh, congratulations on everything. Thank you very much. Really, indeed. terrific. Thanks for coming. Thank Good to have you here. Rupert Everett, everybody. Jerry Orbach. Very cool guy. is coming up. We'll take a break.